Welcome back to the Power Hour. Thank you for joining us. It is eight minutes after the hour, and we are so glad to have you joining the Power Hour today. Dr. Bruce Fife is with the Coconut Research Center. It is a not-for-profit organization under the direction of Dr. Fife. He is the author of 18 books, including The Coconut Oil Miracle, uh, Coconut Lover's Cookbook, Eat Fat, Look Thin, The Detox Book, Saturated Fat May Save Your Life, and Health Hazards of Electromagnetic Radiation, which we carry at the Power Mall. He is editor of the Healthy Ways newsletter, and we'll tell you how to get a copy of that by going to or emailing contact at coconutresearchcenter.org. Dr. Bruce Five absolutely astounded me with his latest book, Stop Alzheimer's Now. Thank you, Dr. Five, for joining us on the Power Hour today. Welcome. It's my pleasure to be here with you. I can't believe you are saying in this book what you are saying. I really can't. I mean, are you not a little bit concerned that you've gone over the edge here now uh, with getting in the way of um, getting in the way of mainstream medicine? Not at all, because what I have described in my book will be far, far more beneficial than any drug therapy could even hope to be. That is amazing, and I am so thrilled that we are announcing this today, that we have the book, Stop Alzheimer's Now, Protect Your Brain at the Power Hour. And there is a foreword, of course, by Dr. Russell Blaylock, who normally probably is is asked all the time to do forwards. He probably doesn't do them very often, but he did for your book. Dr. Russell Blaylock, who's been on the Power Hour, who is an MD, is promoting this book also. But you say in here, how to prevent and reverse dementia, Parkinson's, ALS, MS, and other neurogenitive disorders. I mean, have the feds been to your door yet, Bruce? (laughs) Well, you know, believe it or not, there's actually scientific studies, published studies, that actually um, back up everything I say. So I'm not just pulling things out of the air. Everything in my book is based on published studies so there are facts to verify everything well i'm thrilled and it's 350 some pages i mean 350 pages of absolute documented information on all of these diseases how to stop it how to change it i mean i am just thrilled that you have made this book i mean i'm just kind of being sarcastic with you because we all know the system but i mean you really are attacking it and telling it like it is in here let's start with what the connection is here with all of these diseases. All of these neurodegenerative diseases must have something in common that you write about in your book. What is that? Yes, definitely, because, you know, they're all um, diseases of the brain, the nervous system, and common elements between all of these is the chronic inflammation and the excess oxidative stress, stress or the excess production of free radicals and all this together combines to prevent the brain from effectively utilizing glucose or producing energy. And so the brain cells, when they cannot uh, utilize glucose, they cannot get the energy they need to actually live and survive and to function. And so what they do is just like us, if we don't eat you know, for weeks and weeks on end, what happens? We start to starve to death. The same thing happens with the brain cells. If they cannot get the glucose and convert it into energy, the brain cells begin to degenerate and die. The brain begins to shrink. We begin to lose memory or we begin to lose our motor skills, depending on what type of disease, depending on what part of the brain is affected most by this the different types of diseases will surface. And so for Alzheimer's, for example, the the areas of the brain that are involved in in memory and cognitive function begin to degenerate the quickest and the first, and you slide into dementia or Alzheimer's. And so the key of all of these um, diseases, neurodegenerative diseases, is energy. The brain is not getting the energy it needs to function and to live. And so basically what my book does is explain how to provide an alternative source of energy to the brain so that it can function the way it's supposed to be. Well, in it, a nutshell. And, and, 
And in a nutshell, though, I mean, well, it takes 350 pages in a nutshell to do this, but and, and thank goodness it does because you deal with, now let's say, for instance, Parkinson's disease, a disease that there is no cure for except for donating to the, you know, Parkinsonian Disease Association, um, and they'll find something someday. But, I mean, you've got uh, Michael Fox, who, bless his heart, has been doing everything he can, uh, including having brain surgery to try and alter this disease, when I guess it's known that he also partook of uh, a lot of diet colas, too, during his lifetime, uh, whether that or not affects it. But you deal with the drugs here, the Parkinsonian drugs, the anticholinergic drugs. And on page 79, I really appreciate the fact that you go into the drugs that people take for these diseases and why they are not good, why there are side effects to them. Definitely. You know, there's lots of drugs that we use all the time that actually affect the brain, and people don't realize that many of these drugs that we take every day chronically you know, do affect the brain, and they interfere with the brain's ability to utilize glucose. And so after a while, you know, it's going to have its effect. And it's really interesting um, because some of these these drugs are very common, like Advil and Motrin, Aleve, you know, um, very common, uh, Sinutab, Contact, NyQuil. All of these affect the brain. And if you want to have a healthy brain, you should not be taking any of these type of drugs. No, wait a minute. Those are over-the-counter. Obviously, they're <laughs> safe or they wouldn't be there. A contact or Advil, come on. I mean, they, those drugs, most people would not believe it if you told them that they actually affect the brain. How do they do that? Well, you know, these, these, these drugs um, interfere with the normal processes of the brain. They interfere with the normal chemistry of the brain. And in so doing, you're, you're interfering with the normal uh, metabolic processes of the body, and it degenerates the brain. Well, let's talk about the damage that these drugs do, because as soon as somebody is diagnosed with, uh, let's say, Alzheimer's or Parkinson's disease, these dopamine drugs, or um, to increase the dopamine these drugs that are given to these patients, all of a sudden, many times they see a negative response or they see a deterioration in the condition. Why is that? Well, what they're doing is they're forcing the brain to produce chemicals when it's already, the brain is already on its last leg. You know, it's like, it's like whipping a horse to pull a heavy load when the horse has two broken legs and it tries as hard as it can until it just falls over dead. And so it dies quicker when you force it to do more than it really is capable of doing. And these drugs do the same thing to the brain. It's forcing the brain to do things it's just not up able to do. And so the, the drugs may work for a short amount of time, but in the long run they're causing more damage. And people will then switch drugs, try more drugs. That didn't work, let's try another one, or let's add a second one to the first one, which only compounds the problem, and they never seem to get better. I cannot tell you the number of people that have told me that, well, ever since they put Dad on an Alzheimer's drug, he just got worse. And to be in an Alzheimer's unit, if you've ever worked in one, it's like chaos. I mean, it is until they, you know, and so the only option then is to sedate these people beyond belief where they really cannot function because if they were going to be functioning it would drive all the caretakers crazy and it's so sad because you know think of the people that do this at home all right there's got to be a nutrition side of this let's talk about what is missing from the brain or what has happened to the brain when you uh, have the advent of Parkinson's or MS or one of these neurodegenerative disorders well, you know, what happens is, as I mentioned kind of earlier, is that the brain isn't able to use glucose. And so we get glucose from all the carbohydrates we eat. Uh, most of the carbohydrates we eat are made from glucose or other sugars, and these other sugars actually will be converted into glucose. And glucose is the um, source of fuel that all of our cells and our bodies utilize every day. And if the brain can't use glucose, then it needs something else. And that's where ketones come in. Um, Ketones are um, produced in the liver from fat. 
And so, for example, if you went on a fast and you didn't take any uh, carbohydrates at all, your body would then start producing ketones or ketone bodies. Now, the interesting thing about ketones is that it's the only other fuel that the brain can use. So these ketones are produced primarily for the use by the brain. And so actually, we produce ketones every day. They start in production when blood sugar levels start going down. So between meals or during the night when you're sleeping, when you're fasting, basically, ketones are starting to be produced. And in the early days of medicine a century ago, I see it's time for a commercial. Yeah, we'll be back after this four-minute break with Dr. Bruce Fife. The book is Stop Alzheimer's Now. It's a big book, ladies and gentlemen, and it is worth every single cent. 